Hello everybody, how are you doing? I hope you're having a great day. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to my channel. Today's video is gonna be on things to know before buying a Calathea, also known as the Calathea kit. Now in this video, I'm gonna be sharing some tips and tricks to consider before you buy a Calathea and also some things you may want to buy. These are things that I've found particularly helpful in owning a Calathea and some of these things I wish I'd done before I actually purchased my Calathea. So without further ado, let's get into it. The thing that you need to know about any Calathea really is the habitat in which it lives in. For Calathea, this is the rainforest. Now, in order for a Calathea to thrive, we need to recreate those rainforest conditions in our home, which should make kind of sense really, because if that's where it's used to living, that's its natural habitat, you wanna recreate those conditions so the plant looks and behaves as it should in the rainforest, then you'll have a beautifully healthy plant and you should hopefully not really get any problems. So what does that mean? Calathea generally are known for being rainforest plants. They usually sit close to the forest floor, so they're in quite a humid environment, a very warm environment, and they're not getting direct sunlight. They're getting very dappled light. If you think about being on the forest floor, the sun is coming through the top. There'll be all kinds of jungle trees up in there, blocking the rays of you know light from the plant. This is actually one of the reasons why the undersides of the leaves on a lot of Calathea are purple, but I can go into that in a completely different video if you're interested. So how do we know if our environment is right for this or set up for this? Now, we can obviously assume at this point because we do not live in a rainforest, at least I don't, in Manchester, my home is not set up to be a rainforest or a rainforest simulation, if you will. So what I use is one of these. This is a thermometer slash humidity meter. This tells me how humid it is in my home and also the temperature it is in my home. Now it's reasonably, it's not too warm in here to be honest, it's showing 19.7 degrees. It's fast going up because it's in my hands and it's showing 63% humidity, which is pretty darn good to be honest. A typical home could have anywhere between, depending on the time of year, it could be between 10%, 60%, it completely varies, so it's good to know what yours currently is. In the summer months, your house is usually more humid, but it's still good to know. So how is this useful? How much is it? Well, this is from Amazon. It's very cheap. It cost me less than 10 British pounds. Uh, so you could probably pick it up for around about $10. Very, very good. Comes with a battery, mind it anyway. So you take it out of the box, you put the battery in and you're good to go. What I would do with this is, I would put this in the area where you're thinking of putting your plant before you get your plant. I would put this there maybe a couple of days before. You need to monitor this for 24 hours minimum, I would suggest, to find out what temperature it is and what the humidity level is, and then we know how much to adjust this level to. So your minimum range, I would suggest for Calathea, is probably no less than 17 degrees Celsius. And for humidity, I would honestly suggest no lower than 40%. If you dip below these percentages, I cannot guarantee you that you will not get a crispy plant. And we don't want crispy, we want sexy. So put one of these in the spot where you're going to place your plant. If your general humidity is over 40%, then you are good to go for your minimum level. If the humidity in your home is less than 40%, I would not recommend getting a Calathea without using some extra measures for that humidity. But if you're over 40 without doing anything, then we're good to go. I also like to keep this close to my Calathea permanently so I can still monitor the humidity and the temperature around the plant. So that's quite helpful. So you've checked your humidity and you find that it is a little bit on the low side. So what can you do to help with this? Get yourself one of these. This is an aroma diffuser. Uh, also known as a humidifier. Now, I do not recommend this precise diffuser. This is a, I think it's made by Zen or something or other. Basically, a diffuser slash humidifier releases, you fill it with water and it releases water vapor into the air and thus increases the humidity. As I said, I do not recommend this one. I don't even use this anymore. I didn't buy it for plants, so it's fine, really. Um, I do have more of a, a custom humidifier built for the job uh, that I keep running downstairs. And then I also have a one in the bedroom that is slightly smaller and a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, shall we say. Now, humidifiers range in size, uh, feature functionality and price all across Amazon. I will leave links below to everything I use and everything I recommend in this video. So I will actually link both humidifiers that I'm talking about. But the real star of the show is my humidifier downstairs because it has a huge capacity. It can toggle uh, cold or warm mist, which is just amazing for a Calathea because that way I can help increase the temperature around the plant as well as the humidity. Not only that, but the humidifier actually allows me to set a desired humidity percentage of the room and the humidifier will actually 
work as hard as it needs to, or not at all, to maintain that percentage, which is mind-blowingly good. Mind-blowingly good. So if you like, you can just buy a cheap humidifier that does the job, you know, not a very big capacity, that's fine. I would suggest finding a humidifier with a large capacity because it will help you out and you will fill it up less and it'll just be a load of your mind a lot less. But the larger the humidifier, generally the more expensive it is. Do have a look on Amazon and see what you can find. There's, there's literally something for everyone, whether you want to connect to Alexa, whether you want it to light up or not, whether you want it to look part of the furniture, whether you don't care about that and you just want a big unit that just does the job, you will find whatever you're looking for on Amazon. The range of humidifiers is huge. So don't even worry about that. If you cannot quite break the bank for a humidifier just yet, then it may be a good idea to get one of these. Now you can just get one of these anyway, as well as your humidifier if you want. This is simply a spray bottle. Um, it does nothing except just sprays water out. But if you spray the leaves of your calathea with this in the morning, the, um, the humidity will obviously encircle the plant and it will help the plant create its own microclimate of its own little bubble of humidity, if you will. So something like this will help if you can't maybe stretch to buying a humidifier just yet, or it's just, you know, this, you're gonna buy the thermometer or something in place of the humidifier straight away. This cost me literally one English pound, so about a dollar or two dollars, cost me nothing. Fill up with water, great. So another thing that would be really, really handy for your calathea, and this is definitely a recommended step, is to water your calathea with distilled water or filtered water. And I'm saying this before you get a calathea because you may need to source the ability to do that. What I use is what's known in the UK as a Brita filter, which is basically just a jug that has a filter in it. So you keep it in the fridge or wherever you're gonna keep it. Um, and you pour tap water in and that filters out the fluoride, I think it is, in the water. It filters out a lot of impurities and it will make your plant much, much healthier because if you go back to the whole concept of a rainforest, the very thing that we're trying to recreate in the home, uh, Calathea don't really have that kind of water in the rainforest, they're getting rainwater. If you have the ability to collect rainwater to water your plant, Excellent, brilliant, use that. But if you don't and you plan on using tap water, don't use a filter and you will see a great difference in your plant. If you do not do this, you may be wondering what happens if you do not do this. You may see uh, browning on the tips of your plant, uh, quite crispy tips as we know them to be. So in order to prevent crispy tips, remember we like our calathea sexy, not crispy. Please use filtered water. And when you do use filtered water, please keep the water at room temperature or above. I repeat, keep the water at room temperature or above. Really, they love lukewarm water. If you give them cold water, as with most houseplants anyway, I think, they can actually drop their leaves because the water shocks the root system. Again, when in doubt, think of the rainforest. What conditions are there? The water there is not cold. It's probably gonna be room temperature slash lukewarm by the time it reaches the soil and the roots of the plant. So we need to keep that in mind and recreate those conditions. So this next item, honestly, I could not live without. Literally, it doesn't matter what I use it on. I use it on all my plants. I don't just use it on my calathea. And that is a watering probe. Now, why have a watering probe? What is it? What does it do? Well, you stick this probe into your plant, into the soil, probably about two thirds down where you expect most of the root you know, mass to be and you take a reading of it. And this probe will tell you how wet, moist, dry the soil actually is. And I actually recommend this for a few reasons. One of the main reasons I recommend this is because I didn't really know when I started taking care of plants what moist actually meant. If you think about that, like what is moist? Do we all have different interpretations of what moist is? Some people think it's, you know, barely, it's barely even moist. It's like, it's so close to being dry. Some people think, that for something to be moist, it's actually more closer to the wet side. So the way to get around that is to use one of these. Now this has a meter on it. When you first water your plant, the meter will read wet, which is what you expect, which is totally fine. Um, and then hopefully, you know, a few days later, we'll get to the point where that meter is, the needle on the meter is in the middle and it will show moist. Now you're probably thinking, okay, great. So when do I water? If I'm using this to test when I need to water my plant, when do I water it? I water it when the dial on this is starting to touch into the red zone. So for me, this is number three on my dial 
I will watch this. And as soon as the plant reaches this level of moisture, I will water the plant. It's worth saying that when I do use this probe, I do probe around the pot and take kind of an average reading and make sure that I'm not just sticking it into the one place that's dry or the one place that's wetter, um, just to make sure I get an accurate reading. This meter can also be used for light and pH. That's certainly what mine has. I don't use it, to be honest, I don't. I just use this for watering, but I cannot live without this because I am an overwaterer and what I think is dry is actually moist. This probe taught me that. So it's a very, very good thing to have for all of your house plants, to be honest with you. This is a fantastic device. This cost me about six Great British Pounds, which is like, I don't know, eight or nine dollars maybe. It was nothing, but honestly, you will just not kill your plant and not just Calathea, anything. If you are afraid of overwatering like a snake plant or a cactus, go for it. You won't overwater it. This is fantastic. Please get one. You won't regret it. It doesn't even take batteries. It's literally, it's just as is. Really, really recommend. Excellent. So one thing you may be keen to do with your Calathea when you get it home is to repot it. Now, I don't actually recommend that you do so. I, in my experience, Calathea seem to do very, very well in their nursery pots anyway. But not only that, but you are really stressing the plant out when you bring it home from wherever it's being sold to you. I'm sure, without a doubt, the conditions where you bought it from are vastly different from your home. So usually the turnaround on any plant, to be honest with you, showing signs of distress or just generally adapting to its new surroundings will be a week to two weeks. So you don't really want to repot during this time. In addition to that, I would be mindful about the type of pot you choose for your plant. If you're going to 100% repot the plant, i.e. take it out of the nursery pot in which you bought it in. Uh, I have here a terracotta pot. Now you can put your Calathea inside this pot if you want, but I really don't recommend it. The reason I don't recommend it is because terracotta will leach water from the soil at not an alarming rate, but it will it will constantly leach that moisture all the time, all the time. And a Calathea loves moisture. So we're essentially stealing moisture that we're expecting for that Calathea to keep and hold on to. You can pot a Calathea into one of these pots, that's fine. I just don't necessarily recommend it. What I do recommend doing if you really, really love the terracotta kind of aesthetic is to take your Calathea and literally keep it in its nursery pot. Keep it like this, like you still have the appearance of your beautiful terracotta pot, but the Calathea is still inside a nursery pot. And honestly, that will be a big help. I I haven't repotted a single Calathea yet since I bought them. Um, I've checked to make sure they're not root bound and everything else, which is a whole separate thing. Um, but I actually haven't repotted any of my Calathea. I've kept them in the plastic nursery pot because they seem to really enjoy it. I think because any moisture that they get given, they, they're holding onto like 100% of that moisture, if, if you will. Um, so they, they only get rid of the moisture at their own rate. There's nothing in addition to that that's kind of sapping the moisture. Also, this totally isn't a new house plant that I went out and bought very recently that my boyfriend totally is not happy about. No. I've got soil from doing that. I've got soil all over the bed. So that is kind of it for my Calathea tips slash what to buy slash, I don't know, I, I haven't titled this video yet, can you tell? But the long and short of it is, the general rule, if you will, is imagine the conditions of your plant. This goes for any house plant that you buy, to be honest. Your aim is to try and recreate the conditions in which the plant will grow. The more you recreate those conditions, the more healthy your plant will become. And last but not least, I guess my main advice is to research thoroughly the type of Calathea that you're going to buy or you may have already bought. Because honestly, all Calathea aren't equal. I have some that are much more difficult than others. For example, my Orbifolia that I own. Beautiful plant, don't get me wrong. But my God, she is a diva. Like she takes a lot, a lot of work. If I miss a day on watering, it's just all hell breaks loose and I just get brown leaves everywhere. It's not a good look. It's not a good look. Conversely, my Velvet Touch is actually quite fine. I don't really get browning tips or anything. It's generally very tolerant. It just likes me. It's not It's not a very problematic Calathea compared to, say, the Orbifolia. So that is it for this video. I will leave all the links to the things that I'm suggesting in the comments below. As I say, 
You don't have to buy all of these things. These are just things that I use and I find very, very helpful. I repeat, you do not have to buy all of these things, but I do find them very, very helpful. Feel free to look at the items that I've put there and find your own alternatives if you wish. There are tons of different things available on there. My links are all Amazon links, but obviously there are many other places to get these things from. They're pretty widely available. That is it for this video. I wish you all the best luck in the world with your new Calathea. If anybody has any other things that they recommend that you have slash do or anything like that, please leave them down below in the comments so that anyone coming to watch this video gets a little bit of extra tippage that maybe I've forgotten to do. And if you like this video, please leave a like. In addition to that, if you want to see any more of my content, please subscribe because I'm a very, very small channel and I'm aiming to grow the best I can on YouTube. So your subscription will really, really help. If you have any specific ideas for a video, then please do leave a suggestion in the comments and I'll be sure to check it out. Also, you can choose to follow my Instagram at Let's Wet My Plants. I know, best name ever. I thought it was really funny at the time. Now I'm stuck with it. So here we are. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one. Bye!